That's one way of crossing the channel. This is another. This is the Allure 45, built here in Cherbourg. Uh, and we're here for Yachting Monthly's test. Day one, we didn't learn much about performance because there's four knots true and this boat is kitted out to go around the world. Uh, so we're off back into the marina and we'll try again tomorrow. Up at the bow here, massive double bow roller there. Got a spade in it at the moment. Also at the end you'll see the two to one halyard uh, for the Jenica or for the Code Zero and the tack for it there. That socket there is a passerelle, but there's also, it can be used as a bow ladder, you know, in Scanwegian territory. Two sets of cleats on either side, so you can be alongside and also rearranging your mooring at the same time. And in here, got the windlass and a huge anchor locker. There's also a sound locker down here. Full depth, you can stand up there and your head's just over the top. You've got bars which act as a ladder, that's currently stowing extra fuel. Plenty of room for sails and fenders and lines and pretty much everything. Moving aft, huge walkthrough because you've got the inners next to the coach roof here and the shrouds out at the, uh, at the tow rail. Easy walkthrough, loads of space, great handholds. All the way back on the spray hood here and a nice step so you can get into the cockpit. My back rests, very comfortable. And you've also got this, uh, this is marine deck, which is cork with uh, resin, kind of mix. Shooting up here, which is very comfortable if you're lying around. Fixed table, storage in there. Good grab rails, fore and aft. Twin wheels, which has changed from the 44, which just had the one. But it was much thinner than the 44. This one's got a, a, a lot more beam to it, which is also brought further aft, um, which makes it more powerful as well. And you've got this walk through to the transom here. Under this one is the passerelle, uh, which fits into a socket on the transom there, or at the bow, as I mentioned. Under this one is an outboard, 6 HP outboard, which uh, slings on the dinghy, which is on the arch, which also carries the wind generator there, got the stern light, a couple of Wi-Fi aerials, GPS, and a solar panel going in here. Um, Jeffa steering system, always feels great. Instrument pod here, got a gas locker here. A spare over there, and you've also got the uh, engine, windlass, and bow thrust controls on that side. Under this, what looks like a cockpit locker, is actually a hatch into the tech room, a vast sort of technical space full of spares and gizmos and all sorts. Uh, and you can remove this so you can either load straight in or you can get some ventilation while you're working in there, a little bit of extra light. So that's that side. And on the other side, we've got a sole depth locker. It's a very neat stowage handles here that the owner invented. It doesn't look like much storage, but you must remember that there's the sail locker forward and there's a ton of storage below, several tons, I would imagine. So you've also got a nice alley up in here and these washboard doors, cascade washboard doors, which are very convenient. You're not always wondering where to put them. And this is, um, the, there is an option for a third cabin here, but the owners who plan to, plan to take them around the world have gone for this technical room, which is very, very clever. There's a washing machine tucked away here. All the spares that you're going to need. Um, there's a pipe cop here. Room for the generator there. And there's a freezer there. There's a bike here. Access to everything you need. And the space to do it in. So this is the aft cabin on the starboard side. Huge double. Tons of storage. Again, any corner of this boat there is storage. There's an access panel there to a generator, which isn't there yet, but it just makes it really easy to maintain. At the back, you've got access to the quadrant, um, the starboard quadrant at least, and the rudder sensor, and <coughs> all sorts of gizmos there. Hanging here, uh, pot locker here, bin locker rather, fuse box here, so you've got three opening hatches, in fact, and access to the fuel filters in the engine bay. And important things, blue water sailing, a maintenance access, we've seen that's brilliant there and in the fuse box here and uh, also storage which is I mean the drawers on both sides down here another one over there there's space under these lockers there's lockers in there under here in here there are everywhere you look there are lockers and of course you've got this fabulous view to have with your sundown with another one set there the head's over here. It's got a separate shower cubicle here with a door that fastens magnetically to this. Give me a seat there. 
two opening hatches, so ventilation is going to be really good. Hugely light, and it's got two mirrors here that kind of echo that around. Um, got the holding tank here, and in here we've got a control for the electro scan system, which um, uses electricity to get the chlorine out of seawater, and then uses that to treat the black water. So what you put over the side is clean. Um, Handholds are brilliant; they're everywhere. This one also um, conceals the centerboard lift line, lift line and drop lines. Those go under here to an access panel over there. And holds again everywhere to this linear galley, this gorgeous linear galley on the port side. Nice windows there for light. Light is excellent. You've got two here. You've also got these spots that you can use. Um, double fridge here that's got lovely rack system. Microwave up there. down there, all in trays, so it's easy to take out. Uh, there's a water manifold under here, I'll just show you that, which is very handy, it just means you can uh, switch tanks really easily, move your water around. And this was something the owners requested especially, it's from GNS Pass, it's one of their, uh, they're very good cookers. Is, uh, is the line, and they've also got this fabulous three-way gimbal, which is great, and they've got a, a tray system, so you can take trays immediately from there and just put them in here on these ledges. This thing, again, was specially requested. Great storage outboard, and down here, there's also drawers here. There's storage everywhere. It's a very nice one for, for your olive oil and your herbs and spices and so in there. Here's the saloon. Uh, the access panel to the centerboard lift lines are, are here. You've got this table here that um, these, these leaves fold down and you can, the table drops, so this becomes a vast double berth. Uh, the storage all along the outside, behind the seating, under the seating, under the seating, there's, there's storage everywhere. And these lights in the deck head make the, you know, it's, it's really light down here. Here's the forward cabin. Again, masses of storage. There's a shelf locker here, there's a bookcase here, two more shelf lockers here, a hanging locker at the end. You've got four of these huge drawers under the berth. There's also more storage forward of those and forward again up near the bow thruster. And there's also storage in there. So much storage. And you've got three opening hatches as well as the, the whole ports. So, it's a gorgeous place to be. Well, it's day two here in Cherbourg and there's not much wind, there's a lot of fog in the bank there and what there is is southerly, so heading north to Portsmouth um, is going to be a motoring affair. So we're going to swap the 55 horsepower of this for the several thousand of the ferry and try again back in the UK. We didn't get any wind in Cherbourg, so we've come here and there's plenty uh, with skies to match the hull. We've got about 17 knots, 17, 18 knots, um, and she's obviously she's fully loaded. She's ready to go around the world. So we were getting about six and a half upwind. Uh, doesn't sound like a lot for a 45 footer, but she is completely loaded. She's, as I say, she's ready to go. So yeah, we were getting seven knots at one point. We got. Uh, she's happiest at about 40 apparent wind angle. 35 is pinching a bit. 40, she's happy. Uh, coming down onto a fetch, we were getting sort of 6.9, topped out at 8 knots, uh, at about 21 knots apparent wind speed, and that was about 70 degrees apparent wind angle. Uh, so yeah, 8 knots topped out there, and then coming down on a beam reach in about 19.20 apparent, 7.1, 7.4, so she's not a mad performer, but then that's, that's not what she's about, she's about, you know, going around the world, and she's perfectly ready for that. She's nippy, easily controlled, rounded up once or twice. A lovely boat, sails herself pretty much. She's about going around the world in comfort. You've got the aluminium hull, which is you know easy to repair and won't damage easily. 
uh, twin rudders there, which is so she dries out. So there's the centerboard line. This is uh, that raises and lowers the 200 kilogram centerboard. So she can run up beaches. She can noodle around in lagoons. She's fully kitted out for some uh, some shoal draft work, uh, and she's enormously comfortable. She's got, so the aluminium hull for the for the strength for the rigidity, and then this deck is DLP, and the sort of uh, are fixed and fastened right the way along the, the side decks, but it just makes it so much more easy to put fittings on a deck if it's GRP rather than aluminium. Um, which is enormously comfortable down below, uh, fabulously well built. Uh, she's pretty much the ideal blue water cruiser, I'd say.